Welcome to chapter 13, the luckiest chapter in the book, in which we're going to be talking about relationship marketing and building customer loyalty. Now, a couple of things you need to be aware of about relationship marketing. There are two views of the world insofar as relationship marketing is concerned. These are definitions. The American led by Leonard Berry and the Berrian School of Relationship Marketing see relationship marketing as a tactic. It is a promotional tool for direct mail, catalogs, and database mining. The Australian New Zealand, the Nordic School, and the Anglo-European approaches to relationship marketing are predicated on the concept of trust, commitment, and reciprocity. See relationship marketing as a strategy, as a long-term engagement in co-production and co-creation. Somewhere in between is Vargo and Lush and service dominant logic. What you also want to be aware of is the little footnote to this confusion between the two terms. When the AMA changed their definition of marketing in 2004, it included the term, or the, the phrase, managing customer relationships for the benefit of the organization and its stakeholders. There was a grassroots revolt by members of the American Marketing Association over the use of the term relationship and managing relationships because they said, quite en masse, why has the direct mail tactic been promoted to being a core of the understanding of marketing? So they didn't conceptualize relationship as trust, commitment, reciprocity, and what we talk about in this chapter in terms of loyalty and the value of loyalty, they conceptualize it as a tactic. So be aware of that when you are looking at the theories and the research around this area. In terms of the value of relationship marketing and loyalty, it's about the money. Loyalty can drive financial success. Because what you're thinking about in financial success is recurring purchase, which looking at your growth or sustainability model to sustain an organization over time, you will need to replace customers who switch, who leave, who have other uh, reasons not to purchase. To grow, you need more customers than you currently have, or your customers need to buy more than they currently do, or they need to buy the more expensive versions of what they currently do. So your first three options on the list here are very ANSOF matrix in their nature. Your third, your second half, your customer turnover and regaining lost customers are about service recovery and solving service problems. So if you've lost a customer and you can find out why, you can regain that customer. And your final element here is actually relationship marketing. So Getting existing customers to buy more and getting them to buy more expensive units is loyalty, a loyalty incentive. People committing to sustain your organization through repeat purchase of your products. Terminating the unprofitable ones is a relationship management element where you have judged the customer lifetime value or the current value of this customer that they are costing you more then you are getting in servicing them and they are costing you more than their total value they commit to the firm. There's a very important thing to talk about here briefly on uh, unprofitable customers versus loss-making customers. The case study is LiveJournal, the online blogging tool that was bought out by a Russian investment uh, conglomerate and this particular group when they came in went through and saw that there were three levels of 
client. LiveJournal had three levels of clients. You had paying customers on subscriptions or lifetime memberships. You had advertising supported customers who had slightly greater feature sets but who didn't pay a cash subscription. And you had free customers who had reduced usage but saw no advertising, paid no money. Without calculating the value of the free customer base, they saw the free as cost and tried to sack all of the free customers. The immediate thing that happened is that they found that the paying customer, the subscribing customer, was subscribing so they had access to the free customers. So in fact, the audience that was making them money was needing, you needed to have the free customers to have a large enough audience to make it worthwhile for the paying customers to be using the platform. So these weren't in fact unprofitable or loss-making arrangements, they were profit-making arrangements. The free accounts were driving the profit center because they were driving the value offer. That was what the paying customer was buying. So it's really important that you think in terms of profit and loss as a holistic, what is the product I'm selling? Where is my revenue coming from? What part of the audience am I selling to the people who are paying me the most money? So what is the value that is being sold here? What is the value proposition? Don't assume free is bad. Don't assume that paying is good. You've got to calculate the profit and loss of the component parts. And yes, you can grow and you can sustain a firm by removing high cost customers who are not valuable to you and also removing customers who are not valuable matches because they're not going to attract other customers of a profitable nature. Or they are worse yet gatekeeper customers who are not profitable and spend their entire time complaining about the new crowd who are profitable and the old, expensive, doesn't make you any money group needs to be dealt with and sent on their way. So, what's the value of loyalty? This is the loyalty value as we see it as the company. Now, we're not going to actually talk in this slide deck about what loyal, what's the value of loyalty to the customer. That's going to be in the chapter. I want to talk about what's the value of loyalty from the perspective of why should we, as a service designer, aim to have loyal customers? Four reasons on the deck. The opportunity to cross-sell. Someone who is loyal and someone who is committed to your brand can buy more of your brand. You can sell them different parts of the brand. So you have a bank account. Your bank account can become a credit card. That credit card can become a credit card and insurance and a loan. You're all within the one umbrella brand. You are multiple products, single user. You're worth more than single user, single product. The longer you're with the firm, the more uh, efficiencies come into play, both from the firm's point of view, that you are, there are a lot of setup costs in services, and also from the point of view of the more experience you have, the more opportunity you will have to co-produce and reduce costs. Loyal customers tend to buy more because they like the product you're selling and they like the loyalty and loyalty incentive schemes. Loyalty drives loyalty and this is the reciprocity concept. They are getting something out of being loyal to you. You are getting their increased purchase rate. Similarly, positive word of mouth from loyal customers. Loyalty, because it's been a positive beneficial experience for the loyal customer, they are likely to share that loyal experience and endorse and recommend the experience. And finally, not on the screen, one of the other values of loyal are the other customers. 
the brand identity, the self-identity, and then the ability to loyal, regular customers who are good value. So the bands who have that fandom, the loyal fandom, who induct new fans who present a value add-on by themselves. So there are reasons to have loyalty to the service and that the value of partial employees, long-term loyal partial employees who co-create a service product and co-create the service environment is a financial benefit. That said, loyalty doesn't always work for all industries. As always, with everything in services marketing, you've got to make the theory, you've got to test the theory against the product and make it work where it can and discard it where it won't. So loyalty is useful where there's a high expense in recruitment or there's a high cost in that startup phase of keeping it, of getting a customer into the system. Once you've got the customer, if it's expensive to service the customer and the customer is expensive to service, you may not want that customer unless that customer is providing other value. So this is where you start thinking about lost leader pricing. This is where you start thinking about an expensive customer. What value do they provide overall holistically? If an expensive customer who's hard to service creates great word of mouth, then that's a value that they are creating. Therefore, the loyalty is useful. But if everyone's expensive to maintain, might as well transact. There's a decent margin on sales, so there's actually, the longer you keep them, the more they're going to make in terms of money. The customers have a high sales volume, so there is a point. If it's a low sales value or there's a low sales volume, it's an infrequent purchase or it's an infrequent transaction, it's an infrequent engagement. What's the point of loyalty? You don't need it, so you shouldn't be investing in it if it's not going to help. It also really counts where there's a lot of word of mouth referral. If there's very limited word of mouth referral and there's a lot of search behavior and a lot of search attributes to your service, you may not necessarily want loyalty. Now you might have noticed in the hamburger industry, whilst Nando's has a, the Peri Peri Points loyalty scheme, Grilled doesn't. McDonald's doesn't. So there is a loyalty scheme in one fast food restaurant because there is a value there, but there are no loyalty schemes where there's high competition and low margin. So what's the other value of loyalty? From, again, organizational point of view, services are dependent on segmentation. Segmentation can be driven by loyalty type. And we've got an interesting two by two matrix here because you've got a you've got the involvement between high and low and you've got share of customer spend on a continuum with purchase repertoire. So share of customer spend, the more of that customer's purchasing that takes place at your organization, the lower the number of different purchases that customer will be making, so they will have a smaller purchase repertoire. Conversely, the more purchases they make, the larger purchasing repertoire they have. Mathematically, there's a less, there's just less share of customer spend you can hope to achieve because they're sharing out their purchase and their spend across a range of providers. So that creates a two by two matrix and that creates four different segments. Those segments can then be used to drive a strategy. So from this segment set into the strategy, what types of strategic behaviors can you undertake? And you note here that you're looking at different activities, different size of rates. So what you want to be thinking is on one side, on your loyals, you're trying to build your barriers, you're trying to retain them, you're trying to service them. On your switches, you're trying to shed them. So you don't actually want to keep the problematic switcher, you want them to go to another firm. You want them to be someone else's problem. Whereas you want your loyals to be lifers for you. 
So strategy becomes a decision. A strategy becomes how does this segment respond? What is my best option to get them to respond? Which leads us into sending you back to the textbook. Because there is a lot of detail here. And what I want you to be thinking about in this detail is how do I apply it? Where I've got good relationship customers, the platinum, the gold, the iron, eh, the lead. What do I want to be thinking? Do I want to be thinking about retention, platinum, gold, conversion, gold to platinum, iron to gold, lead to iron? Do I want to be thinking about pulling off the old classic, lead to gold? Do I want to be looking at how do I get rid of the lead customers whilst retaining the iron? How do I assess what is the value? The segments that are costing me money, are they segments that are, are they a cost that I need to incur as part of retaining the value for the platinum and the gold? So you want to look at those elements. You also want to be thinking about the rest of the book in terms of the strategies that are appearing here. How is that tying back to what else I have studied? How is that tying out to my literature? How is that tying out to the way I conceive of the service blueprint? How is it linked back to the service flower? What do I need to be thinking in terms of segmentation, targeting, positioning? What do I need to be thinking about in terms of product design? So again, look over this, loyalty by segment, loyalty by approach. Retention strategies, again, another one that's a co-create pushback to the book, but I want to talk about the foundations. Positive, negative, deterrent. Creating loyalty. Reciprocity. Commitment. Building in a reason for people to be loyal. Building in value. Creating and delivering an offer that has value. The creation of loyalty bonds is about making some, making the commitment worthwhile. Switching barriers. Look, there are some points here that uh, you got to be careful. Uh, psychological switching barriers. Loyalty is tribal. Tribalism occasionally is problematic. Uh, you want to be thinking about the ethics of your switching barrier behavior. You don't want lock-in contracts, you don't want legality over... As a marketer, your preference is to create loyalty. Your firm probably wants to break out the lawyers just to make the contracts watertight and impossible to escape. Your accountants may be thinking, well, if we just had a whole bunch of bundled on costs, we could propose it as cheap and bill it as expensive with a legal contract that they're locked into that will create negativity. Yes, they might be stuck in that contract for two years, but you have got an angry, unhappy, negative word of mouth generator for two years in a row, courtesy of your own contract. Finally, churn drivers. How do we reduce? This is going back to the positive. Why are people leaving? Why do people want to quit the firm? What can we do to encourage them to stay? So we want to be thinking about this from the point of view of three ways to keep and retain customers. A proactive, there is value and loyalty. A defensive, these are the barriers that makes it harder for you to leave. And barriers are a negative. You are building blocks to stop people from exiting. Back to the positive, back to the service recovery end of things of why are people leaving? What can we do to reduce the churn? Why? What is happening? Can we redress? Can we resolve? Again, hit up the textbook on this because there's a lot of good detail. Lastly, CRM. I want to mention it. I want to raise a couple of things in here. Particularly what I want to look to, if you look at this particular model, there's a couple of ideas in here that are important. The concept of share of wallet also links to the concept of the customer lifetime value. CRM technology, there's a lot of stuff. Look, this is a big field. You can make a bucket of money here. If 
you want to know how do I apply my services marketing subject practically, get into CRM, get into customer relationship management, get into advising, get into building systems, learn how to use the existing systems, consult on how to build these things. Really good area to get into, really good area to understand. Because CRM is strategic. CRM requires a strategic engagement, but it also generates a bucket load of tactical opportunities because every strategy resolves as a tactic. So look here at strategic development process, business strategy. You want to get in there, that's when you're wearing your really nice suit and your sharpest of outfits to talk big game about how retaining customers, that's the strategy. Then you get into talking about how to retain them through value. Then we have the customer segment lifetime value analysis. A lot of maths, good market research opportunities, good statistical opportunities. If you've got a real love of economics, accounting, and marketing, you're big on numbers, a lot of work to do in CLV. But CLV needs to be implemented. So if you can speak numbers and strategy and tactics, well, numbers and tactics, you can talk about how to turn this person is worth money, how do we retain them? If you've got an information system style approach, IT, a good love, uh, again, a love of coding or numbers, CRM requires infrastructure. In intro to marketing and in market research, we talk about marketing information systems. CRM the heart of CRM is the marketing information system. You, whether it's a notepad, spiral back notepad beside the phone that everyone agrees to, every time you're on a phone call, you make notes about the phone call. Whether it's typing up records of, of clients just called, make notes of any information we've gathered. It's about building corporate knowledge. So when you do things in a marketing plan like internal environment or internal analysis, it's your information systems, your CRM systems you're looking to. These CRM systems are also vital if you're going to be using your ANSOF matrix of sell more to existing product. Sell an existing product to an existing customer. You need to know who they are, how much they're buying, and whether you can pre present them with more of it. So a lot of good material here. A lot of good opportunities as well. This is practicality. So getting into CRM. Uh, also, just want to you know, a shout out to Payne and Frau, who are very good authors in this area. Get your hands on their work. Get it, read over if you want to get into CRM. Whilst you're still here at the university on the on the IP address, download everything you can. A lot's been written on CRM, both from the technical IT side and from the marketing side. So, what you're looking at here is a real opportunity to stake a career. Because what you ultimately want to do with CRM is CRM is about value. Can you create it for the customer? And thereby, therefore by creating an offering that has value, enticing them to buy more or buy new? Can you create it as an offering that has value for customers, clients, partners through shareholder value? And through society at large, CRM can help you actually make the world a better place. If you are solving needs and fixing problems and bringing service, the CRM can work in profit and non-profit. In fact, it can probably work in government really well, but we haven't fully explored that path. So this is a good, valuable tool set. I want you to look at it, but I also want you to think about it in terms of long term. This is an area for you. If you're excited by this, you're good at any of the skill sets that are on display here. So implementation, strategy, planning, market research, IT, Infosys, heck, even accounting. A lot of opportunities. It's a great area. It's probably one of the strongest areas. And it lets you draw on your services marketing knowledge. Because it's either going to be as a direct 
core service product. So this offering that has value that you're going to create up and put up in here, this customer value you're going to create can be a core product, an actual product, so it's, or it can be the service flower. It can be that augmentation product, so it can be the customer service. So there are huge opportunities. Really cannot sell this hard enough to say this is a great opportunity to go out and get a career out of it. And that's the chapter. CRM, look, there's a lot of self-directed work on this chapter. Relationship marketing could stand alone as its own disciplinary area. And eventually, it's only been around for 20 years, it took about 30 to 40 years for services to get really established as its a separate domain. But CRM, loyalty, relationship, a lot of stuff's been done on it. Good opportunity to go hit up Google Scholar and grab yourself some additional intel, particularly if you think you want to go down this path. You want to get involved in this, grab it whilst you've got the opportunity to get your hands on it, come back to it, read it up, get involved with it. As always, if you need me on the platform, on Twitter, through the hashtag, across the email, or come see me face to face. And that's a wrap for the chapter.